Day of Light, May 16th. I'm very pleased to be joined shortly by Dr. Tatiana Kunz, who's going to explore with us photons in space. Um, it sounds like very catchy. Um, I'm very looking forward to have her, to have her with us uh, shortly. Um, we're going to have a very short presentation, very fun, lots of videos, pretty cool, very excited about that. And then you're going to have the opportunity to ask your own questions. So, get them ready and we're gonna uh, give you the space and the time to ask them afterwards you can also type them in the chat if you're on youtube or else but please let us know on the it's gonna be katania's um pleasure to answer your questions so here she is hello everyone uh, okay uh, i hope oh. oh yeah i was gonna share your slides very shortly and i'm gonna thank you so much for being here uh, being here with us today on international day of life very exciting about it so the stage is uh yours now and i'll see you soon awesome thank you so much alex uh hello everyone so my name is katanya kunz and uh today i'll be presenting on photons in space so i'm a research associate at the university of news of uh, of waterloo uh at the institute for quantum computing and um today i'm going to be celebrating with you the international day of light because today is the 16th of may and um, what is a better way to do that than talk about photons in space? So I want to give you a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. Um, and some of these questions you can start thinking about right now. Uh, and so if in, in the class, just in your own minds, just start thinking like, what, what do you think light is? What is light? And, and what is quantum physics? Have you, have you heard those words before? Uh, and what's a photon? Um, we're also going to talk about what is quantum key distribution. Uh, that'd be cool if you've already heard about that. That's what I do for my job. Um, and then what is satellite QKD? Uh, so that's what quantum key distribution stands for, QKD. Um, and then what is this uh, mission, this KeySat mission that we're going to talk about that I also work on? And the overall, what is the quantum internet is how we'll finish off. So if you have any ideas uh, for the first one, what is light, maybe jot it down, write it down, tell your teacher and uh, add it to the chat and we can uh, find out what your answers are before I tell you what I, what I think light is. Um, but before we get started, I just want to give you a little background of, of who I am. So I'm an experimental quantum physicist. Uh, so what does that mean, right? I play with light and I play with lasers. And I, in order to become a physicist, I had to study. So I went to the University of Calgary for my bachelor's of, of physics, uh, bachelor's of science in physics. Uh, and then I moved to the other side of the world, to Australia in Canberra, and I did my PhD there. And I, I actually now have a PhD in electrical engineering. So uh, I have a bachelor's in physics. And then when I moved over there, uh, I was in the engineering department. So that's a really cool thing that happens in this field. Sometimes laser physicists are put in the engineering departments because there's a lot of electronics that go into what we do. I play with the light and that's and there's a lot of physics behind understanding how it works. But then when we actually do the measurements, when we actually do the experiments, a lot of it is engineering. So uh, that was at the University of New South Wales. And I also stayed to do a, a postdoc afterwards, which is uh, when you're done your, your PhD uh, and you're continuing to be a researcher and you don't have your own group yet, you're not a group leader, uh, but you're working in a, in a researcher group and you're helping mentor other students, uh, other undergrads and, and graduate students. So then I went back to, us, uh, to Canada <laughs> and this time over to the uh, University of Waterloo and as a, as a postdoc fellow um, there, and then I've stayed. And so uh, when I joined uh, Waterloo in 2015, I joined uh, Thomas Yanavine's group. And so uh, his group is doing quantum optics, and this is what we're gonna be talking about today. 
So uh, now, uh, as I said, I'm a research associate, uh, which means it's I'm not a full group leader. Thomas is the group leader, um, but I'm the uh, KeySat science team coordinator. So this means I've gone from doing experiments in the lab a lot to taking that knowledge and applying it to help a satellite mission uh, come into, into the future and <laughs> come into flourishing. So uh, like I said, we're going to talk about uh, light. And so I'd like to first just show you a, some, some images of what my first ever optics experiment was, because pictures uh, literally uh, explain it a lot better than I can. So, <laughs> so here, uh, I remember I, I noticed on the last couple of broadcasts, there were a lot of questions about lightsabers. And I happened to make, I made a lightsaber as my first ever uh, optics experiment. So this wasn't quantum yet. This was all what's called classical optics, which means I just use a, a really big laser, which you can see is coming out of this black box over here, this bright beam coming out, this green beam. And then you can see uh, the other ob objects that I use uh, on this optical table. It's basically like building a Lego with light. So we have some, some uh, mirrors. Uh, see, the mirror is reflecting the light and making a very nice sharp angle and then you see these lenses here i hope you guys can see my uh my cursor a little bit so those lenses are changing the size of the beam and the whole idea was to get the beam to the right size right so that it reflects off of a very special mirror which is hiding behind this glowing cube on the right here um, it's hiding behind there and then the lightsaber part is between these uh, white lines right there, okay? So that's the lightsaber. And why it's called a lightsaber is because you can see the beam of light, right? Usually light, if I was to just shine a flashlight at a wall, it would get bigger and bigger if the wall was further and further away, the light spreads. But you can see this beam, it's the same width, right? It's the same thickness. It's the same brightness. It's not getting dimmer like, like light usually does. And, it, and then it all of a sudden just stops. And then the little the pattern that, that's creating this is called interference. This interference pattern, it, um, it stops when the mirror, when the light has hit the end of the special mirror. So this diagram that's above here, this is showing this interference. So each one of these uh, red lines is to try to be a picture of what is the light doing when it bounces off the mirror, which is this uh, gray thing on, on the left here. So uh, yeah, if you wanna learn more about this, I am happy to talk about it later, but I just wanna give you a taste of what my first ever experiment was and why would you wanna do this? Well, you, these, these are actually called Bessel beams. It's not really a lightsaber, right? Because light will pass right through other light, so we can't fight with it, but we can use it in, in other applications to say manipulate cells because it's a very, very precise beam. So uh, kind of think of like tweezers, right? But instead of using a metal tweezer, you're using an optical beam. So this is the, the point where I would love to hear some feedback if anybody wants to, to share. Um, what is your definition of what is light? So uh, enter it into the chat or uh, tell your teacher, raise your hand. <laughs> And uh, if Alex wants to read out something or, or say anything, I'll, I'll give her like a good 10, 15 seconds to say something. If not, we'll move on to the next question or to the next mm -hmm. one. So is there anyone willing to, to share anything? I wonder if, if one of the two classes that we have with us today have anything. Otherwise, I read something from the chat. If folks want to join, it's uh, it's, it's your opportunity now. But uh, more questions are coming, anyways. But uh, oh yeah, there'll be plenty of time. Of <laughs> light yeah. is cool. Light is bright. That's pretty clear. Then oh, mm. maybe someone from this class. Hey, hey there. Hi. Can you hear us? Yes. Yes. So, Claudia, can you restate your answer? What did you just say? So light is a straight line, basically, that is made up of different chunks. She said that light is made up of, it's a stream and it's made up of photons. We're, we're in fourth grade, so we're using what we know. I, we went over this a lot yesterday. Um, wow, that was a great answer. answer. Um, and then also, how does light travel? Who would like to answer that? Uh, go ahead, Taylor. Um, light travels, this is just what I think. Yeah. Um, 
light travels through beams in the air? Waves and also what's the other way that they, that light could travel? Go ahead, Claudia. Particles. particles. Is that correct? Like that's amazing. Waves correct. Okay, yes. great. Gold stars to all the class. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Yeah, so that's one of our definitions for sure. Um, we're going to be getting to what is the, a photon and, and the wave particle duality of light. So that's super exciting that you already know about it. Wow, blowing my mind, grade four class. <laughs> All right, so um, what is light? It's an electromagnetic spectrum. What is an electromagnetic spectrum? Don't worry, there's another diagram coming, but it's a spectrum or an extended rainbow is another way to think of it. So when we look in the sky, and we see a rainbow. Remember the, the visible light? We're used to seeing that, the red all the way to the purples, right? But there's other parts of this extended rainbow that we don't see with our eyes, but other, uh, other animals and insects can see some of these other wavelengths. That's what they're called. Um, and so because you see this oscillating, this up and down wiggle, this, this red line at the top here. So that's representing the wiggle the oscillation of the light wave and so if the wiggles are really close together right like on the left side over here that's the gamma rays those are the really high energy rays they have lots of energy and they're wiggling really 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 fast and then if you're on the other side of the the extended rainbow the electromagnetic spectrum you have these long wavelengths and it's these radio waves and and they're actually the size of buildings which is pretty, pretty big, right? So when you turn in, tune in onto the radio, right? Not satellite radio, but just the regular radio um, where you don't need a computer necessarily. So yeah, if you have that radio, you have these really long wavelengths and they're low energy and they, and they wiggle very slow. All right. And then there's a few, uh, so this is this, these pictures in the middle here, it's, it's telling you like, these are the approximate sizes of the wavelengths of the light. So when you get to um, ultraviolet light, that's the type of light that gives you a sunburn, right? So that's wiggling kind of fast. It's on the scale of molecules. Um, and then uh, infrared light, that's the light that when you feel heat off of a, off of a stove or a fire, um, and we just feel the heat. You can also see the heat, right? If it's a stovetop that turns red when it's hot, that's, that's the red light, right? That's right next to it. But before you can even see the red, um, you can feel the heat and that's infrared. And so actually we use light a lot in our lives right now, all these wavelengths, um, x-rays, if you've ever gotten gone to the dentist and got an x-ray, or if you broke a, an arm or a leg, <laughs> Um, also microwaves, uh, that's part of the extended rainbow too, to, to warm up your food, right? So <clears throat> we get to watch a movie now. Uh, light, like I said, it's, it's made up of colors, right? And so how do we see these colors? And so we can use a, a prism. Some people might have seen that famous picture before with the, the triangle and you have the white light coming in and then the rainbow coming out. Um, another way to do it is this thing called a diffraction grating. So a diffraction grating just has a whole bunch of lines very close together. You can see it here. And so you have white light coming in and then there's going to be white light that will go straight through. Okay. And then you get um, also the light bends based off of its wavelength, its color. So purple light bends less and it's called refraction but we can just call it bending. Uh, and then red light bends the most. So that's why in this, in this rainbow you can see, purple is really close to where the light, white light comes straight through. And then red is on the outsides, see? And it's, and it's inverse. So I'm just gonna exit out of the slideshow and play this movie. So there's no sound. And I'm gonna make it full screen. All right, and it's gonna loop a couple times, so we'll get used to watching it a little bit. So we have this white light that this object here, that's the the diffraction grating that he's holding in his hand, and then um, he puts it in into the beam, and then you see there's a white light in the middle, and then there's rainbow on either side. And I'll pause it. 
I'll pause it now. So see, we've got the white light in the middle, and then we have blue, green, yellow, a little bit orange, red, right? And then we got same thing, purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. And that is how you can see all the different colors that are in white light. And another way would be a rainbow. That's another way that we see like uh, the rainbow, um, how sunlight breaks up into the different colors. Cool. So as I said, it's this light wave, it, light wave, it's wiggling, right? It's oscillating. It's going up and down. What's going up and down? Well, okay. So now we have a little bit of physics. So we have this electric field, okay, and a magnetic field. And they are at right angles to each other, right? And that is the wave that's oscillating. So an electromagnetic wave is an electric field and an elect and a magnetic field, and they are um, together and they're, then they're propagating or moving, traveling through space um, in, the, in the direction that's perpendicular to all of that. So you've got this X, Y, Z, right? If you think of the corner of your ceiling, you've got the up, down, you've got the side, side, and then you've got the other one, right? So you have this nice little three way there. So now, um, here. Now, if we talk about polarization, what is polarization, right? So it's this flag here that we're going to put on the electric field. That it's like a, it's like a label. Okay. And we're going to put that label and we're going to say, if it's pointing straight up and down, that is vertical polarization. And if it's pointing side to side, that's horizontal polarization. And it's always going to be whatever the electric field is doing, because that's just the marker we're going to use. And now we get to watch another movie. So I bet people have seen uh, polarized sunglasses before. And I don't know if anyone's ever done this with polarized sunglasses, but you can do it with your computer screen. You can do it with your phone. Um, basically, what we're having here there, the, the white sheet that's behind us, that's the behind the, the sunglasses, that's polarized light. Okay. And so when the sunglasses are pointing straight up and down like that, there's polarized light coming off of the white, um, the white sheet. And then you have the sunglasses blocking them. And then the sunglasses obviously are going to make the light dimmer because it, they're sunglasses or you're going to shade your eyes, right? But what happens when you rotate them to this angle? Now all the light's gone. Imagine if you put on sunglasses and that happened, you'd be blind. So what's happening? So these are polarized sunglasses. That's the, that's the important part. And the light coming off of the white sheet is also polarized. So if the light coming off for example, is horizontally polarized, okay, or sorry, horizontally polarized. And then if the sunglasses are only letting through vertically polarized light, well, if there's only horizontal light and there's no vertical light and the polarizer, the sunglasses are set to only let through vertical light, you don't get any light. There's no light because it's it's the wrong it's the wrong label. It's like it's like the little photons or the light waves are coming up to the sunglasses and saying, OK, uh, this is my polarization. Am I allowed? And then the sunglasses say, sorry, you're not allowed. And then they, and that's why it's blocked. And we can actually use that effect in our experiments to help direct the light the way that we want. So we can use polarization. Um, not only to help us see better when, when we're driving, because that's what polarized sunglasses are for. It's to help reduce the glare because the, the light that bounces off of the street, that is actually polarized to a particular uh, way. And so your sunglasses cut them, cut that light off and let all the other light through. Yeah. All right. Um, cool. Oh, yes. Okay. So we have one more video now. So like we've talked about light. We've talked about what is polarization. Um, and we've talked about how light has different colors. And what can we do to put all those things together? Could we make some really cool art maybe? Um, let me pull up the other thing. Sorry. Hang on. We need this one.
and this one. Okay. So what we're going to do is just take some ordinary scotch tape, normal plastic tape, clear when you take it like that, right? We're going to take a little piece of plastic, hard plastic, that we can tape the tape onto, okay? And um, they're going to put that in multiple layers onto that little piece of plastic, but you can still see through it. Doesn't look very interesting, does it? Now we have our polarized light sheet that's polarized light coming off. Now, now what's going on? Now we have this, this uh, polarized light going through the, the sheet. We have the tape and then um, the person is holding a polarizer and is rotating that polarizer. So just like the sunglasses where the sunglasses were sometimes letting through horizontal light, sometimes letting through vertical light, sometimes letting through a mixture, right? Diagonal right? It's all the angles, all the angles from zero to, to 90 degrees, all the angles. So um, what's happening is there's a special uh, effect that the tape is doing to the light. The tape is actually giving a rotation to the light. It's rotating the light's polarization and it's based on the color. So red light is getting a slightly different polarization rotation from, uh, that kind of rhymes. <laughs> Red light is getting a slightly different polarization rotation to blue light. So maybe red light in this angle, right, is being blocked because the polarizer is set to just a certain angle that's letting more blues, more yellows, things like this. And if we play the screen, now we see other colors come through as the person is rotating the polarizer. And we keep going and then we get some other shimmery colors. And so all that's happening is that the tape and the, and the combination of having polarized light is letting different colors through because uh, the tape is rotating the, 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 the polarization based on color. Does that, hopefully that makes sense. We can, we can watch it one more time because it's so pretty. <laughs> Yeah, see, it's just all the different colors are coming through because the polarizer is letting through different polarizations. All right. So that was a long, long intro to what is light, but it's a very important topic. So I had to talk about it, especially on the International Day of Light. So now what is quantum physics? This would be a this would be the other question I wanted to just see. Uh, um, what what other people would say about uh, what is quantum physics? And don't worry, we're coming up to what is a, a light and what is uh, what is a wave and what is a particle. <laughs> <laughs> so many good questions. I don't know if anyone has a as an answer. Um, I feel like it's those like walls that we quite often hear, but like we don't always know what the meaning is. Like physics, we can guess quite what it is. It's like very vast, like very wide, but. Together, like quantum is always like in weird movies, like like the the villain. Exactly. <laughs> All like, stuff, like you know. <laughs> or your dishwasher, apparently, right? <laughs> Everything is quantum nowadays. Everything is quantum. Uh, well, let, let do, do we have any answers? No. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Mrs. Sin Sinsota, maybe. Hmm. Oh, we just typed a question because one of the students had a good one. Um, she said, "With the tape experiment." When you layer the tape, does that have to do with the color changes as well or like the way that the light's filtered? Yeah, it's adding to the level of rotation. So by layering the tape and having it sort of uh, not cha like chaotic, a little bit chaotic, right? So you're getting all these different layer thicknesses. So then the polarization is going to be rotated slightly differently depending on how, how much tape it, the light travels through. So you okay. want to have it like multi-layered. And there's really cool uh, YouTube videos all about this where artists have used tape uh we can share the links later maybe where they've used tape to make these really cool images and as and just looks like a clear uh sheet with with like a cat face for example and then as you rotate the polarizer you get all these beautiful colors that's so cool could you use that with a light box or do you need a specific light it just has to have polarized light coming off of it so if you have a polarizer on top of your light box that would keep the light coming off polarized then it should work yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, oh, we can totally hook you up with the teaching materials. All right, thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, no worries. Okay, I'll let you go out with the quantum physics mystery then.
All right. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, so quantum physics is the study of the microscopic, the, the sub microscopic and atoms, the tiny. It's, it's understanding the universe of the tiny. So uh, this is this picture here on the left uh, is actually what 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 chalk looks like when you zoom in on it with a microscope. So, you know, chalk that you use on your sidewalk or in your blackboard on your blackboard in, in school. That, that's exactly what it looks like uh, on the microscopic scale, which is pretty crazy, right? Um, quantum physics also talks about uh, chemistry and bonds and how do chemicals work? How do chemicals interact with each other? Because it's all based off of how do the atoms work? So what is an atom? You might have seen this picture before. This is one of those classic quantum physics. Here's an atom picture, right? So uh, this isn't what we think the atom, we don't picture the atom like this now. This was one of the earlier models that led to, uh, this was one of the first quantum physics models, I would say. So you can see here inside an atom, we imagine that there's this center part, this purpley part called the nucleus. And that's the part that has the protons and the neutrons of the atom. And then orbiting around the, the nucleus is the electron. And so this is how we thought an atom looked. But the problem was when we thought about electrons as orbiting around something, like how planets orbit around the sun, um, our physics didn't make sense. Uh, the phys I can explain this more later, but the physics of why you don't burst into flames when you sit in front of a fireplace, for example. So there's classical physics that explains the very, very big, like how planets go around the sun. And then there's quantum physics that explains very, very small. And before we had quantum, because this was invented about 100 years ago, but this was in the early 1900s. Um, this is when quantum physics was, was, was born. Uh, so before we had these theories, we had classical physics. And those theories couldn't explain, like I just said, why you don't burst into flames when you sit in front of a fireplace because classical physics had this way of thinking about uh, how an atom should work with these orbiting electrons and it, it it just it doesn't work it would mean the atom would collapse and in, into itself and we wouldn't exist so it's like clearly i exist uh, matter matter is real so something's wrong with that theory so we go into the these other theories i'm not going to talk about them but i just want to show these pictures because this is the progression of physics, right? Like it's, it's, it's not just you figure it out and you're done. It's an ever ending story because we're always learning more. So we have the next model, which was the Bohr model where instead of the electrons going around and orbiting, you just have the electrons in these, in these shells and they're very stable. And then you don't have those problems with, with the old theory. And now these, these, these pretty pictures here, these heat maps of probability distribution. So uh, this is how we think of a, a hydrogen atom now. So each one of these pictures is what a hydrogen atom would look like, okay, if it was in what's called that energy state. It's like a configuration. It's like, the see how all these electrons are, are around the nucleus on this side? So those electrons can move around. They can go higher up in the orbitals. That means they go higher up in energy. And so um, these clouds, these pictures, it's like, where do you think the electron's going to be? Because that's what quantum physics has shown us. We don't really know exactly where the electron is inside an atom. It's a probability cloud. It's a likelihood, okay? And so all these beautiful pictures, of the, especially the ones down here with the flowers and everything, those are just all the different ways an atom can potentially look um, with, with the, with the uh, it's called an electron orbital. <laughs> but... So what is a photon? So we've already talked about uh, particles and, and, and now we're gonna, and we've talked about a little bit about waves. So now this is, this is where we bring it all together. <laughs> so you might've seen this before. This is Young's double slit experiment. It's a very, very famous experiment from the early 1900s where uh, uh, Young demonstrated using a light source that light behaves like a wave. And so see, uh, we have a light source on one side, we have these two, slits in a screen here and then the light waves propagate and then which means uh travel right uh and then they interfere with each other which is what these orange and blue lines are showing and then you get these interference lines of bright and dark patches and so 
um, interference. It's, it's something that you would be familiar with if you've ever seen uh, water waves crash into each other. When the two waves uh, are, are and, and that's what these little pictures zoomed in here, right here are. So if the two waves are perfectly out of sync, right, uh, one's going up and the other one's going down, then they will cancel. And then you get a dark spot on the, on the interference pattern. But if they are perfectly in sync, then they will add together and you will get a, a, a bright spot. And so this is a way that we can test that light acts like a wave. Fantastic, fantastic. So what about this particle thing? So light can also act like a particle. We can actually create in our labs individual particles of light called single photons. Uh, and so if you put a single photon source at this side and do the same thing and fire the photons one at a time through this the screen, the photon has to choose which slit and then see what happens. You actually slowly build up an interference pattern. So how is a photon acting like a wave? I thought it was a particle. Well, where did it go? Okay. So what if we track it? What if we watch? Where does the photon go? It comes out of its photon source. It goes to the screen and then it has to choose slit A, slit B. Which one does it choose? If you watch it, guess what the photon does? It doesn't make an interference pattern anymore. You get a big splotch of light behind slit one and a big splotch of light, uh, splotch of light after, after slit two, and that's it. No more light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. If you watch where the photon goes, you destroy the interference. This is really, really important and fundamental to how all of this security stuff works when we use single photons to do secure quantum communication, which is what I do for my job with the Keysat mission, which we're coming to if we get there. <laughs> so what is quantum key distribution? Um, this is what I'm talking about. So it's when we use individual single photons, particles of light, to share information securely with other people. And because of quantum physics, if someone tries to tap into your message, if someone tries to eavesdrop, they are detected because of, like I just said, if you watch where the photon goes, it affects the measurement results. So if somebody tries to tamper with your message, with your key, when you're trying to generate it with your party, um, you will know. So why do we need this? What's going on? So we have encryption already, right? We can do stuff. When your parents buy you things online, they're using public key encryption to make sure their banking details are secure, right? But the problem is with, with, um, with, with this encryption is that it's vulnerable to this new technology that's coming out now called quantum computers. Quantum computers are a different type of computer. It's like the next IT, and this is, this is what my job is in. So the security of this QKD stuff, though, it's not based on how hard it is to solve a math problem, which is what our public key encryption is doing right now. It's really hard to solve some of these math problems. It takes computers the age of the universe to figure it out. So it's perfectly fine to use that right now. But a quantum computer has different abilities. It's a different type of system. So it can crack those codes. So we need something else that's not vulnerable. So, like I said, quantum information, it can be transferred, it can be communicated, it can never be copied. No one can take a copy of it. If they try, you will know. Or it literally just won't work. Everything will break. <laughs> and the measurement disturbs the system. So, um, this is what, uh, what QKD is. And like I said, a photon is a particle of light. It's carrying one unit of information, and it's called a quantum bit. Like, you've probably heard of bits in a computer. So this is a quantum bit or a qubit. What is satellite QKD? So satellite QKD is where we use a satellite to do the quantum key distribution with a ground station at the, at the, uh, on Earth. Uh, and then uh, we share the, the, the key. And I don't have time to go through this, but maybe if people are interested, we can talk more about it. But this is, a, this is the KeySat mission. Um, that, that I'm working on. And so the idea is to have secure communication between these two stations, A and B, and we're going to use a satellite to make that happen and single photons. Okay. So on the ground, this is what we're doing. We have a, we have a telescope, we've got some lasers, we have people who are probably very cold because it's very cold when it's nighttime and in Ontario doing these experiments. 
And uh, we're sending photons in different polarized states of light up to eventually a satellite. So what is the KeySat mission? It is the Quantum Encryption and Science Satellite. So to build up to doing this mission, we had to do a lot of demonstrations on the ground. We had to do Thomas and, and, and his group. Um, we all had to do a lot of uh, initial demonstrations and lab work before we would uh, work on this satellite mission that's, that's happening now. So here we have uh, some pictures of our equipment um, when we had to, to when we set up an experiment to do QKD from a truck. And so this these, this crazy contraption looking here that's uh, trapped that's strapped into the truck with all of these cables, these orange cables. The orange cables are actually the fiber optic cables that are collecting the single photons. And um, the front of the telescope is is this thing right here, and that's the the receiver. So this is a quantum receiver, and this was one of the first demonstrations of a moving uh, receiver uh, QKD experiment. So then from, from moving uh, on, a tr on a truck, we went to a plane. And so here we have the NRC plane. We've got the telescope uh, right behind JP's head there. And uh, but they had to remove the door from the, from the plane because obviously uh, it's a receiver. It has to be able to see the ground and it, we needed clear access. This is a cartoon schematic right here of our, of our experiment, of our receiver. So you have our green light coming in. Uh, it has polarization. So then we can use a polarizing beam splitter to separate the light into individual uh, channels, um, lines, <clears throat> uh, to these four different detectors. And they are all measuring different polarization states, uh, H, horizontal, vertical, and then antidiagonal and diagonal. Uh, and then this image down here is uh, one of the actual pictures from this demonstration. And then the streak in, in the sky here is when the plane was flying overhead because the telescope is also emitting a, a, a bright beacon back down to the ground station to help with the tracking. So there's a quantum beam and there's also a, a, a beacon beam, a bright beam to help with the tracking. And so this is a, a picture of our quantum ground station that we are currently constructing at the University of Waterloo. Uh, we've got a dome on a roof over uh, on one of the buildings on campus. And this ground station will be acting as a transmitter to the, quant to the satellite um, when it's launched in about two years. Uh, so we've got a shed, we have a dome, we have to keep the telescope uh, uh, safe from the elements. It's obviously we're in Canada, so it's going to be snowy and rainy and all that sort of thing. We have special mounts because the telescope is heavy. It's going to move around, so you have to mount it with very um, careful. This, this is where the engineering side of, of our jobs come in, right? And then we have the we a weather station uh, shown in this picture here on the right, which is uh, how we track um, the weather. <laughs> so we want to, we, the, the thing with quantum physics is it's hard to do it during uh, daylight and when it's windy or cloudy. So those are things that, that the field is working on because obviously we want to get um, daylight operation for these satellites. For now, we have to do these, these links at night and uh, preferably with clear conditions. So uh, weather, weather monitoring is very important. These are some pictures of our telescope. It's an eight inch folded refractor. Um, we have all these different colors, wavelengths that we're gonna be connecting to the satellite on. Um, these are all not visible light. This is in the infrared or just barely red that you can maybe see it. And like I said, I'm the uh, Canadian, so I'm the KeySat science team coordinator, which includes the Canadian science team as well as an international science team. And so this is a map of our team and there's a, there's a QR code at the end of our, my presentation that takes you to a website that talks all about these things. Um, and so you can see lots of collaborators across Canada. Um, we have the CSA, the Canadian Space Agency. They are um, the owners and operators of the KeySat mission and they are the primary quantum ground station. And that's what QGS means in um, Saint Hubert in, in Quebec. And then University of Waterloo is the secondary quantum ground station over here in Waterloo. And then we also have a tertiary ground station being built in the University of Calgary. 
And for our international uh, Keysat team, we've got quite a few collaborators uh, all the way from Europe and uh, quite a few in North America and, and also Japan and Australia. And our team is still expanding, but uh, this is the current state. So all of these players are going to be either contributing equipment to the, to the mission or are operating a quantum ground station them, themselves. Uh, and then we can study uh, all these different quantum links from various locations around the world. Because maybe uh, when Australia is online, our other partners will be offline because it's the wrong time of day or it's bad weather. So it's always nice to have lots of quantum ground stations distributed around the world. And speaking of uh, distributing around the world, <laughs> the grand future of the quantum internet, and this is the goal of, of, the, of um, well, this is one of my own personal goals of my work and uh, what the KeySat mission is, is hoping to go towards, right? Build towards. Um, the KeySat mission is one step towards um, exploring these technologies for the quantum internet. So what is the quantum internet? We know what the internet is, right? We're using it right now to see me talk about this. So the quantum internet is when you link up quantum computers and quantum technologies. And so instead of using what we already have, because it, it's a different technology, so we need to, to do a little bit, uh, we have to build a different network for this quantum internet. And so this is a, a picture of all the different types of links that we might need in the future. And the KeySat mission in particular is um, link three. So that's this one here where we have a quantum ground station, this red thing here, going up to a satellite that is in a, a LEO orbit, so a, a low earth orbit. That's, that's the KeySat mission. And so it's just a straight up and down link and that's what we're gonna be doing. And then future missions, uh, for example, and these are also um, other countries have done quantum uh, satellite missions and they've demonstrated some of these already. So for example, uh, link number four, where we have a satellite and it's going down to a ground station and then it's going down to another ground station and um, it's sharing photons. So that one satellite is sharing photons between those two ground stations. That's been demonstrated already. Um, it's still more, more work to do, um, but these are all the different elements that we're going to need to get the little photons around the world. So thank you so much for your patience and your attention. And sorry for talking too long. Um, again, my name is Catania. This is our group. This is Thomas in the middle here. He's our group leader. Uh, these are all the grad students and undergrads that, and postdocs and research associates and staff that uh, make the, all of these experiments possible. And I've only told you a tiny sliver of our work. If you want to know more, we have our QPL website. That's uh, Thomas's group the Quantum Photonics Laboratory. And then if you want to know about the KeySat mission, we have a URL up here. And please reach out to me uh, and thank you very much. I lost it. Oh, yeah, you are, cool. Thank you so much, Catania. And I'm looking forward to see the, the class questions. And I wanted to thank you uh, for like diving into the photons and like bringing you up to space on very cool stuff. And it does take a big team on a lot of people on energy and time and yeah creativity as well to get up there it's definitely a big challenge but uh, thank you so much for um, bringing us with, uh, on the travel review today uh, looking forward to see if the classes want to go uh, closer to the computer maybe so that they can ask their questions because uh, if students are a bit too far we might not hear them very well um and in the meantime um i'm another question of my own if we have time for that I'm yeah, wondering sure. about like Nobel Prizes and like it's something that we hear a lot about. Like, do you have any insights for the students about quantum, some Nobel Prizes, and like, what's up with that? Well, the quantum, the Nobel Prizes for last year were awarded to three Nobel laureates uh, on quantum. So, um, it, it, yes, the, the quantum is a very, very hot topic right now. Um, and single photons and entangled sources and and how we can use these technologies. For, for future, um, it, I'm not sure what else you want me to talk about. No, that's what I, uh, I was curious about. And it's, it's something like it's fun to see when um, it's in the news as well. It's not only in lab. Exactly. And actually, news. Thomas is uh, my supervisor, supervisor, Thomas's supervisor, when he was doing his PhD, uh, was uh, Anton Zeilinger. And so he's one of the professors that uh, was awarded the Nobel Prize. So um, I have a grand grandfather. <laughs> Great grand prof, yeah, <laughs> Nobel laureate. There you go. Love it. 
Uh, yeah. So let's see if the classes have anything to share with us. I don't know if uh, you folks want to say hi okay. on the question. Hi, folks. Hi, folks. Hi, folks. Should I stop sharing or? I, I removed them. Or maybe like the other class, anything else that you'd like to ask? Uh, hello there. Uh, so someone had a question, but I think I answered it correctly. Oh, um, awesome. So you ask her. Ask her. Can you hear him? Can you hear me? Go oh. over to the computer. Yeah. I'm like, yes. You're right there. Hold on a second. That, that would be easier if you could. Hi. Hello, what's your question? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. My question was um with the first little part with the um, lightsaber. If you were to just touch um like a little bit like half of it would it change the direction because like you said it goes completely straight so if you were to touch just like a little bit of, of the laser would it um stop going completely straight or would it um would it like change and refract right with your hand yeah if you were to like touch just a little bit like no you'd burn yourself <laughs> laser that could like be used to cut things. Like a lot, a, okay. a lot, but, but if you, you had something that, that, laser that you could like point to the board with, I think. Yeah, like a laser pointer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is different, Nolan. Any other questions? Yeah. yeah. But if you you could put something in the beam that would make it bend, right? And so would do that. That they could use that you would use to reflect or change direction. Yeah. Yeah. What type of item do you think? would you use for that? Oh, I see. Um, so you can use a mirror. Yeah. So like in this picture, how that changes the beam, right? Mm -hmm. um, but with this type of a beam, uh, you're actually, the, the point of the experiment was to make that particular type of beam because it's useful in, in like medical physics and in other, other areas. And so um, if you wanted to like bend it, you could put it inside a nonlinear medium like a like a nonlinear crystal or something and then you can that we do that sometimes they're called beam displacers uh so it's using a property of the crystal uh by refringence and and things like this to to change the direction okay yeah thank you thank you so much we have to jump off because we're running a little late but oh, okay has to say thank you thank you so much thank have you a great day, have a good day. bye um, it, oops, I'm gonna remove that. It seems like the other class don't have any questions for you right now, but I want to thank you again so much. It was very insightful and like very on brand for the International Day of Light, and we've learned so much. It was very uh, glad to see all the photons can be so intriguing, <laughs> fascinating. So thank you so much for that. Uh, oh, 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 no, there's a question. Is there? Is there? Are you back? Are you back? No. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, Anyways, thank you so much, <laughs> Tanya. It was very Yeah, exciting. thank you. And thank you to exploring by the seat of your pants. <laughs> and thank you to all the people that joined today, um, people that listen, in, that listen online as well. Uh, very happy to have you with us today. And uh, looking forward to other cool topics with other researchers another day. So have, have a good day, you all, and I will see you around. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.